Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, EAA goes on the record about their LSA sportplane initiative. AEA names Mike Adamson president and CEO. An amateur built accident rate drops to new low. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's October 10th and this is Airborne Unlimited. First of all, if you've seen the breathless AOPA breaking news alerts, don't be fooled. They didn't break the news, and their reports, which all but ignore EAA, are not the result of AOPA effort, but of EAA. EAA says the proposed weight limit change to 3,600 pounds for LSAs is part of the current discussions between EAA and the FAA, prior to any broad mosaic rulemaking, but discussions are still in formative stage. There are numerous ideas that have emerged from discussions regarding Mosaic, which began more than two years ago, says Sean Elliott, EAA's Vice President of Advocacy and Safety. One area that emerged was how to help LSA fulfill its full potential. While weight limit changes are one possibility, a specific number such as 3,600 pounds is something that is still very much in the exploratory stage. The entire Mosaic concept is a sweeping concept that also includes home-built certification and drones. The beginning of the FAA rulemaking process is not expected until early 2019. Any proposal for public comment would likely emerge in 2020 at the earliest. EAA has been the leader in these discussions with the FAA and has kept other general aviation groups appraised to the progress made, Elliott noted. A reformed LSA category would contain more qualifying aircraft, as well as long-sought features including electric propulsion. After the break, new specification configurator added to FlightDesign.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Flight Design General Aviation has announced new changes to their website. This includes a new and easy-to-use aircraft specification configurator. The new configurator has photos of the available options and descriptions as well as the complete specification sheets for all of the avionics, each of the airframe choices, and the four engines available. After years of negotiation with Mercer County and the Triton Mercer Airport Authority, FlightServ has acquired a new ground lease upon which it will construct a brand new FBO and hangar facility. The ground lease is located at the end of Trenton Mercer Airport's Runway 34 off of taxiways Foxtrot and Delta. The 22-acre parcel was formerly home to the Naval Warfare Center. The H-225M with 88 aircraft currently in service in six countries around the globe has surpassed the 100,000 flight hour milestone, following its first delivery to the French Air Force in 2006. The aircraft was rapidly deployed by the French Air Force in Lebanon in 2006, where the H-225M successfully evacuated around 300 people. 
L3 Technologies recently celebrated the opening of its expanded L3 Arlington Training Center facility in Arlington, Texas. The multi-purpose training center provides world-leading simulation and instruction for both military and commercial pilots, as well as state-of-the-art classroom facilities. This facility exemplifies L3's commitment to delivering world-class training and simulation to our military and commercial aviation customers," said Christopher E. Kabasic, L3's Chairman, Chief Executive Officer, and President. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Following an extensive search process, the Aircraft Electronics Association Board of Directors announced the selection of Mike Adamson as its President and Chief Executive Officer to become effective March 25, 2019, during the 62nd Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show in Palm Springs, California. Adamson will succeed Paula Dirks, who is retiring next spring, after serving as AEA President and CEO since 1996. An accomplished and experienced association executive, Adamson will lead the AEA from its international headquarters in Lee Summit, Missouri, which represents nearly 1,300 member companies in more than 40 countries, including avionics manufacturers and government-certified international repair stations, specializing in maintenance, repair, and installation of avionics and electronic systems in general aviation aircraft. Adamson has served as AEA Vice President of Member Programs in Education since 2007 and has been responsible for AEA's training and education initiatives delivered to technicians and small business owners in the United States, Canada, Europe, South Pacific, and Latin America. He helped design, fund, and equip the AEA's world-class training facility, the Dan Derby Center for Professional Development, that has trained more than 1,500 technicians during the last 10 years. As AEA President and CEO, Adamson also will serve as publisher of the association's monthly magazine, Avionic News. He resides in Olathe, Kansas with his wife, Megan, and their two children, McKenna and Nate. After these messages, amateur build accident rate drops to new low in 2017. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. According to the recently finalized results of the 2017 GA Part 135 Activity Survey, pilots of experimental amateur built aircraft were involved in fatal accidents at a lower rate than has ever been recorded, with 2.63 fatal accidents per 100,000 flight hours last year. This breaks the record set the previous year when EAB pilots were involved in 3.6 fatal accidents per 100,000 flight hours. Although the number of fatal accidents involving EAB aircraft dropped from 32 in calendar year 2016 to 26 in 2017, the estimated number of hours flown by amateur builds rose from about 890,000 to approximately 950,000. LSA flight time also hit record numbers in 2017, with special light sport aircraft breaking 200,000 flight hours for the first time on record. Experimental light sport aircraft added its own robust total, with LSA of all types recorded approximately 348,000 hours. The GA survey has recorded a 19% growth in light sport aircraft activity over the past decade. In addition to the good news on the 2017 accident rate, the preliminary count shows the experimental accidents in FAA fiscal year 2018, which ended on Sunday, came in below the FAA, not to exceed goal for fatal accidents. 
Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.